Hello and welcome back to the Rope Access and Climbing Podcast. I'm your host, Mikey Stevenson, and today we are doing a recap on the last episode of If Rope Access Requires a Level 4 Designation. So if this is your first time here, please make sure to subscribe and follow us wherever you get your podcasts. So stay tuned. Step into your harness and get ready for a podcast about the vertical world. All right, well, thank you everyone for tuning into today's episode. Muchly appreciated, as always. Coming up to another year here on the podcast, and I cannot thank you all enough for that. But diving into today's episode, we're talking about the last episode I posted about or fronting the question, does rope access require a level four designation? And from some surprise, I guess I could say, um, it was a very interesting concept. So I posted it on social media, about 52% came back and said, yes, we should have a level four designation. Um, and those people thought a good majority of them said that it should be a scenario based style training. Um, and then after posting the podcast, um, a greater percentage of people came back with, no, we don't need a level four. Let's stay true to our level three designation and go from there. So let's kind of recap a little bit of the conversation and continue this conversation. Like I said in the last episode, um, this is something that could go so many different directions and it definitely proved true here. Um, and a lot of people had a lot of good insight. Um, so thank you everyone that took the time and joined into the conversation and commented. Um, conversation is not over. Please feel free to comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube or just send me a message on Instagram. Um, it's interesting to get your, your feeling on this. I know that there's a lot of people in the industry globally here and this sort of a conversation affects each and every one of us. So thank you very much. Now, if you haven't checked out the first episode, the one that we're talking about, the re uh, that we're doing the recap on, um, pause this, go check that out, listen to that. Sorry, it is a little bit of a, a runaround of an episode, you know, sitting here talking to all of you in my, my room here. Uh, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, it comes around full circle and I think that it does paint a little bit of a picture. Now, here we are doing a recap and just kind of getting an idea of what the masses out there were saying. Like, um, so social media, um, Instagram, you know, if you don't follow me there, please check it out. Um, but there I post, you know, random questions and photos and, kind of updates as the week goes on so it's a little bit more updated than what this tends to be as I post once a week here so yeah anyway um on Instagram 52% said yes we should have a level four and that should be scenario based training um a couple other people have spoke um about this topic and said hey Level four, if we do this, should it be skill-based training where we are learning about using backboards and tripods and advanced rigging techniques? And at the end of the day, that sounds cool, but that also in the words of many people is that sounds like a, another cash grab um, for organizations, bringing people in to get this training so they can go back to work and just ask for more money. Skill-based training is exactly the same thing that we're doing right now. So we're feeding consequence to injury here. Um, and I kind of get what they're saying with that. Like there's a lot of people that are frustrated with, oh, every three years we have to go research. Now, I will be the first person to bash that down and say, no, 
every three years, yes, you do have to go research. I'm sorry, the cost of the course is X, Y, Z, but this is for the safety of you and everybody else. So I'm not worried about that per se. Um, I think that we definitely need to keep that where it is. I would even like to add more training to that. Um, but you know, right now we have a level one skill-based training, level two skill-based training, level three skill-based training. Irad is talking about this online RAMRAS program, which I'll talk about in another episode when I get more information about it, but leave that out of the conversation. But if we add level four skill-based training, then we're just adding on to the problem. Um, but if we do scenario based training as a level four, where we take, okay, skill, skill, skill scenario, um, then that gives the instructor, the evaluator, or the assessor, the ability to test people's skills of supervision. Now that also brings back that aspect. Well, whose responsibility is it to, make a supervisor designation right now with the Ramras program. That's exactly what it is. Irad is taking the onus on and saying, Hey, we need supervisor training. Um, Sprat doesn't have anything like that. And they put that on the company right now. Currently you go through your level three and you're a safety supervisor or you're a rope access level three supervisor, whatever designation you want to call yourself. But you have not proven your competence adequately on your ability to supervise. Now, unfortunately, it's up to the company. The company is supposed to be, you know, making sure that they're putting the right people in the right jobs. I know f myself, I've seen it where the individual gets their level three, they barely get their level three and the next day they're out on a job with five other level ones never supervised before doing this job that they have no business doing that's where i have a problem with this whole scenario i think i think that that's where morally i have a massive problem is supervision is a skill that's learnt in the moment with other people making sure that you're doing properly. This is an experience-based skill. This is not a check the boxes, watch a, a monitor, fill in the, you know, multiple guest questions, and all of a sudden, magically, you're a supervisor. I also don't think that rope access level threes, you should have that supervisor designation on the end of your title. Because not every level three is a supervisor. Not every level three is competent at supervising. What you're competent at as a level three is being able to do a bunch of rodeo clown tricks. And kudos to you. They're fun. But at the end of the day, we don't rely on those. We rely on them when, the, when everything goes bad. The percentage of time that things go bad that we have to physically rely on those those skills is very very minimal. Um, so we're still not at the base of this conversation. We're still not in the area of any authority. You know, at the end of the day, I'm sitting here talking to you and getting your feedback and trying to formulate some sort of idea of what people want. I still don't have any authority to say, okay, these are the changes that are being uh, drafted, and what do you want? I know that that would be a much greater option here, and that's why I said in the last episode, I think it's we're at the, t at the place where we need to put all our chips on the table. I think we need to do that and, and figure out, okay, level ones, these are the skills, level twos, these are the skills, level threes, these are the skills and figure out exactly, okay, change some names, change some terms, change some disciplinary aspects and 
I think maybe we don't look at a level four and we strictly stick to the level three and just revamp that whole system. So you get all your rigging, all your rescues out of the way in level one and level two. If that means revamping everything there, so you get all of that in those those two courses, even if you have to make them longer, who cares at the end of the day? And then your level three is taking those skills, putting them in practice, and then actually implementing some sort of leadership training, scenario-based training. So you take all these skills, you put them in here and whatever else. Now, I understand that there's going to be people saying, well, there's no continuity between training centers or continuity between training if it's a scenario-based training. I get that. But that's the interesting part of what we do. Nobody is working in the same industry. You know, I work in oil and gas. Cool. My experience is completely different from the person working geo in their entire career. Or somebody that is working on the massive gondolas or the tram lines in Chamonix. Like, I have absolutely no idea what it's like to be those people But we're relying on a skill-based training to teach us what we're supposed to know. I know that there's no perfect answer. But we do need to find a better compromise. So, that's kind of where I'm coming from. Now, you know, the big problem a lot of people came back and a lot of people congregated on was the fact that It sounds like another cash grab. I don't think that worrying about cash is the thing that we should be most worried about. I think it's the safety of everybody. And training is very important. If it was up to me, which it's not, but if it was, I would say that level three should go in for a one or two day refresher every single year. Because of myself, I've seen level threes come in after three years on their research and they can't do the basic level one rescues. Information or knowledge loss over a three year span, when you do not do it every day, is very substantial. Okay. Now, people won't admit to that until it's slapped in their face. So, How about we bring everybody in? Every level three comes in every 12 months or 18 months. Mandatory requirement. And there you go. Now you want to talk about a cash grab? That's not a cash grab. That's looking out for the well-being of our industry. Unfortunately, things will negatively happen in our industry. We just have to be prepared for it. But what we can try to do is ensure that the right people are in the right positions. All right? So if you like this episode, you're watching this on YouTube, hit the like button. It certainly helps my platforms here as well. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell for notifications as I put out new content every Sunday. Follow us wherever you get your podcasts and on Instagram. And well, until next time.